Mount Zion is the best place to be on a Sunday morning. It is the best place to be online. It is the best place to be, period. Welcome to Mount Zion Online. Praise the Lord, Mount Zion. Hallelujah. What a wonderful day to be in the presence of the Lord. We thank you, God. We come with uplifted hands and hearts that are full of gratitude. We thank you, God, for this day, God, this day that the promise was given to us. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, for your birth. Thank you, God, for your death. Thank you, God, for your resurrection. But God, thank you for the promise of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, Jesus. For it gives us the power not only to be witnesses, hallelujah, but to live this Christian life. So we've come, we're glad today. We're glad for his sacrifice. We're glad for all that he has given us. And Holy Spirit, we welcome you into this place. We welcome you into the homes of these people. We thank you and God, we welcome you into our hearts today. Hallelujah, open the hearts of your people today, God. Open the eyes of your people, oh God, that they might see you and you alone, God. We thank you for the privilege, oh God, of being able to lift up our hands to give you praise. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah, Jesus. God, we give you glory. We give you praise. Hallelujah. There is nobody like you. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, open the whole. Hallelujah, Jesus. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see. Holy, 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 holy,
Bless your name, God. We thank you for the Spirit of God. Oh, bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Oh, I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like, and I. Yeah. 
good father. It's who you are. 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 And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. 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 You're a good, good father. It's who you are. 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 Come on, just worship the Lord. Worship His name. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Come on. Hallelujah, God. You're worthy, God. You're worthy, God. You're worthy, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. God, we thank you, God, we praise you, God, we honor you for who you are. God, we declare your name righteous and we declare your name holy. Great God, we declare that there is no one like you, but that you are God all by yourself and beside you there is no other. You are the first, the last, the alpha, the omega, the beginning and the end. You are the author and the finisher of our faith. Great God, it is in you that we live, move and have our being and apart from you we can do nothing. Now, God, as we approach this preaching moment, that which has been meditated upon, that which has been jotted down, allow your editing powers to come. Think through your servant's thoughts. Speak through your servant's lips. Fill your servant's mouth with that which you would have your servant to say. Great God, pour fresh oil on me now that I might preach a liberating and reconciling gospel just one more time. Give us eyes to see, ears to hear, our hearts to receive, and our mind that we might understand that which you're doing in our midst. And great God, I thank you for calling me to be a preacher. And I affirm that you've placed your words in my mouth. Now, God, I stand to declare over the lives of your people that the devil is defeated, that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And God, we will all be so ever careful to swiftly give your name all of the praise, all of the honor, and all of the glory. For it is in the powerful name of Jesus I do pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, beloved. Uh, this is the day that the Lord has made. And we've gathered, 
one more time on this virtual space to rejoice and to be glad in it. Uh, we pray that the powerful worship that has gone forth in this on this Pentecost Sunday has blessed you and that it has ushered you into the very presence of Almighty God. I'm excited today because I believe that there is a word in the house today for the people of God that God is getting ready to speak and God's getting ready to do something awesome in our midst. I feel it. Amen. God is worthy to be praised. Right where you are, I just want you to give God praise. I want you to lift your voice, whether you are in your bedroom, your bathroom, at your kitchen table, your living room. Just begin uh, to give God a sacrifice of praise. Declare how good he is. He is worthy uh, to be praised from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. There is no God like our God. He's worthy. He is wonderful. He is awesome. Uh, there is no God like him. He is God all by himself. And so come on, child of God. Lift your voice. Open up your mouth. Uh, give God some praise. He's worthy of all of the glory. He's worthy of all of the honor. There's none like him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. Bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. He's worthy. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Truly, the Spirit of God is right where we are today. Hallelujah. We honor the presence of the Lord uh, today. Hallelujah. There is a word from the Lord uh, that comes to us out of the book of Acts, Acts chapter 2. Uh, I'll be reading in our hearing verses 1 through 4, reading from the New Living Translation. Listen for the word of the Lord. On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly, there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them, and everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. I'd like to shine our sermonic spotlight on verse number one of Acts chapter two. On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Love brother, brothers and sisters for the time that is mine this morning, I would simply like to uh, preach uh, from this thought. There is power in togetherness. There is power in togetherness. My brothers and my sisters, the Bible reminds us over and over again that there is power and blessings in togetherness. Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 30 says that one will chase a thousand and two will chase ten thousand. There is power in togetherness. Leviticus chapter 26 verse 8 says that five of you will chase a hundred and a hundred of you will chase ten thousand. There is power in togetherness. Proverbs chapter 27 verse 17 says as iron sharpens iron, one person sharpens another. There is power in togetherness. Psalm 133 verse 1 says how good and how pleasant it is when the people of God live together in unity. There is power in togetherness. Matthew chapter 8 says, for where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am among you. There is power in togetherness. Beloved, Paul said in Romans chapter 12 verse 4 that just as our bodies have many parts and each part has a special function, so it is with Christ's body. We are many parts of one body and we all belong to each other. Ecclesiastes uh, chapter 4 verses 9 through 12 says that two people are better off than one for they can help each other succeed. If one person falls, the other can reach out and help, but someone who falls alone is in real trouble. There is power in togetherness. Uh, one author put it this way, that the mere presence of others, the participation, the communication and collaboration with others, the assistance provided to others and received from them and the sharing um, of positive energy with others in a group inspires and challenges us and others immensely. 
That is to say that when we are together in unity for a common purpose, we are challenged to go further. We are challenged to go deeper. We are challenged to give more. We are challenged to be better. Beloved, there's an African proverb that says that if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. Beloved, togetherness is the act and the feeling of being unified with another and or others in a common purpose. Uh, one translation of the Bible reads today's verse as being on one accord. Uh, according to the Collins English Dictionary, uh, if a number of people do something with one accord, they do it together or at the same time because because they agree about what should be done. The Merriam-Webster Dictionary says that to be on one accord means to be consistent together in harmony and or in agreement. Uh, see, the truth revealed in today's text is that God's power is present when the people of God are together. Beloved, the events of Acts chapter 2 verses 1 through 11 is known in the life of the church as the day of Pentecost. Pentecost uh, was one of the ancient Jewish fest harvest festivals. Uh, Pentecost was a harvest festival that celebrated uh, the first wheat or grain harvest of the year. Uh, and the Pentecost celebration took place 50 days uh, after Passover, the time of Christ's uh, crucifixion and resurrection. And, pa and Pentecost was a significant uh, Jewish festival. Acts chapter 1 verse 3 tells us that Jesus was with his disciples after Passover for approximately 40 days, at which time he ascended into heaven. In Acts chapter 1 verse 5, just before he ascends into heaven, Jesus tells his disciples uh, to wait in Jerusalem until they receive power from on high to be his witness. Beloved, Jesus is clear that the purpose of the power is to be his witnesses, that the purpose of the power is not primarily to improve the life situation of the believer, but it is to be his witness. See, rather the empowerment of the Holy Spirit uh, would enable believers to do what they could never do in their own strength uh, as witnesses for Jesus. And thus, in obedience to Jesus, the disciples and the apostles uh, and the believers, the early believers were waiting in Jerusalem uh, to be empowered so that they could share the good news of God's redemptive work uh, through Jesus Christ with power and with effectiveness. And as such, Pentecost marks the birth of the church. Uh, it is the launch of the church's mission to make disciples uh, of all the world and it happened because the people of God uh, were gathered together in one place. Uh, see according to our text on the day of Pentecost all of the believers were meeting together in one place uh, when suddenly there was a sound from heaven um, like the roaring of a mighty windstorm um, and it filled the house where they were sitting. And then the Bible says what looked like flames of tongues uh, or fire appeared and settled on each of them, um, and that everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit uh, and began to speak in other languages as the Holy Spirit uh, gave them the ability. And please note, child of God, that everyone present uh, was filled with the Holy Spirit. Uh, approximately there were about 120 people up in the upper room, um, and everyone present was filled uh, with the Holy Spirit. It was not, the, it was not just the apostles. Uh, everyone was filled. Uh, uh, the men were filled. The women were filled. Uh, the seasoned believers were filled. New believers were filled. The elderly were filled. The young were filled. The ordained were filled. The unordained were filled. Uh, everyone present was filled. Uh, the, uh, beloved, the prophet Joel, God through the prophet Joel predicted this when he wrote, in Joel chapter 2, verses 28 and 29, when he wrote uh, these now famous words, I will pour out my spirit uh, upon all people and your sons and your daughters uh, will prophesy. Your old man will dream dreams uh, and your young men will see vision. In those days, uh, I will pour out my spirit even on servants, men and women alike. Uh, and that is to say that God through the prophet Joel prophesied uh, that God will pour out his spirit on all humans 
humans, uh, on all people without distinctions uh, of gender or age or class or race, uh, so that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord would be saved. Uh, and this prophecy is fulfilled and unfolds uh, in Acts chapter 2 with the Jewish believers, uh, and again in Acts chapter 10 with the non-Jewish believers. Uh, beloved, the empowerment of the Holy Spirit uh, is not for a select few. Uh, rather, it is a gift given to all and available for all believers uh, because every believer has been commissioned and called by God uh, to be a witness for Jesus. Uh, not just clergy, not just pastors uh, or apostles or bishops or prophets or deacons uh, or officers in the church. Uh, beloved, if you have confessed uh, that Jesus is Lord and if you have believed uh, in your heart that God raised him from the dead, uh, then you are to be a witness. Uh, you are a witness. Uh, you are a witness that Jesus uh, is the way, the truth, and the life. Uh, you are a witness that Jesus uh, is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. You are a witness that Jesus is the Lamb of God uh, that takes away the sins of the world. Uh, if you have confessed uh, that Jesus is Lord and believed in your heart uh, that God raised him from the dead, then you are a witness uh, that Jesus is the good shepherd, that Jesus uh, is the resurrection and the life, that Jesus uh, is the living water, that Jesus uh, was wounded for our transgressions and bruised uh, for our iniquities. You are a witness that Jesus uh, uh, is a person that, that anybody can become a new person uh, in Jesus Christ. Uh, you are a witness that salvation uh, is not found in any other name but the name of Jesus. Uh, uh, you are a witness that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe in him will not perish uh, but have everlasting life. Child of God, the Bible says on the day of Pentecost that the power of the Holy Spirit fell and filled uh, every believer present. Uh, I want you to know that the believers were gathered together because they were being obedient to Jesus' command uh, to wait in Jerusalem for his promise. Uh, and that is to say that they got together for a purpose. Uh, they got together in faith. They got together in obedience. They got together and with the expectation um, that Jesus would do what he said he would do. Uh, beloved, that's what it means for believers to be together. It's not just about coming together together to eat. It's not just about having a meeting. It's not just about being in the same space, breathing the same air, or just to share a pew. Well, when believers get together, we ought to do so well, in obedience to the Word of God, uh, with the faith that God is who God has shown himself to be, uh, and with the expectation that God will do uh, just what he said. Uh, see, when believers are together in obedience to God's Word, uh, when believers Believers are together in God's purpose. Uh, when believers are together standing on the promises of God, uh, when believers are together in godly expectation, um, the power of God will fill and flow to and through us. Uh, beloved, I'm so glad today uh, that the text says that on the day of Pentecost, uh, that all believers were meeting together. Uh, note, it did not say people meeting together. It did not say complaining us meeting together. It did not say naysayers meeting together. It did not say yeah, spectators or busy, body, busy bodies. It did not say gossips. Uh, it said believers were meeting together. Those uh, who accepted Jesus as Messiah and as Lord. Uh, beloveds, uh, believers are those that confess uh, that Jesus is Lord and believe that God raised them from the dead. Believers uh, are those who know that it was his love uh, that lifted them. Believers uh, are those who know that if it had not been for the Lord uh, on their side, believers are those who know uh, that it was his grace and his mercy that has kept us. Believers uh, are those who know that when they confess their sins, uh, that God is faithful and just to forgive them. Uh, believers are like David. Uh, they face giants. They know that the battle is not theirs, but it is the Lord's. Uh, believers tithe because they know uh, that, that you can never beat God's given no matter how hard you try. Uh, believers 
believers know that God makes ways out of no ways. Uh, believers step outside of the boat when Jesus says come. Uh, believers believe uh, that if they could but touch the hem of his garment uh, that they can be made whole. Uh, beloved, believers are those uh, who act in obedience to the word and promises of God uh, because they have confident trust uh, that God is who God has shown himself to be uh, and will do what God said he would do. Uh, see, when the word of God says to wait, believers wait. When the word of God says to go, believers go. When the word of God says to do, believers do. When God says give, believers give. When God says love, believers love. When God says serve, believers serve. Uh, see, a believer is not someone who is perfect or gets it right all the time. Uh, a believer is a person uh, whose orientation in life uh, is confident trust in God huh? and in his promises. Huh? And the truth is that not every person who comes to church is a believer. Some who come a spectator. Some who come a hell raiser. Some who come simply out of traditions. It was believers who were gathered and meeting together on the day of Pentecost. Huh? I'm so glad today that it says that, that believers were meeting together. Uh, the Reverend Dr. Raquel Letzum says that the unity or the togetherness um, described in Acts chapter 2 is a unity um, that goes beyond sharing the same space. Uh, it is being together together. In other words, uh, it was unity of purpose. It, it was unity of goals. It was unity of faith. It was unity of godly expectation. It was unity uh, of agreement. Uh, Dr. Ra uh, Raquel Letzum goes on to say that just because uh, we are in the same space, it does not mean uh, that we are on the same page. Uh, beloved, all of us know uh, the experience of sharing a space with someone, uh, whether that space is a house uh, or an office or a classroom or a bedroom or a pew, uh, but not being on the same page uh, with that person. Uh, beloved, togetherness in our text uh, is about being on the same page uh, and not simply about being in the same space. Huh? And the consistent witness of Scripture is that God's power is present when believers are on the same page. Huh? If you don't believe me, let's check the biblical record. Huh? In jo Joshua chapter 6, verse 20, the walls uh, of Jericho fell down when the people of God marched together. In Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 6, the people of God uh, rebuilt the broken walls of Jerusalem to half its height uh, in record time because the people had a mind to work together in Acts chapter 12 uh, verse 5 when Peter was in prison uh, and the church came together and prayed for him uh, God delivered Peter from the prison. It's power in togetherness. Beloved Mother Teresa once said uh, I can do things you cannot uh, and you can do things that I cannot uh, but together we can do great things uh, and there are some things child of God uh, that God will only do through us uh, and for us uh, and in us huh, as a church if we are together, if we are on the same page. Huh? See, like in our text, when believers huh, are together, God will fill the house. Huh? When believers are together, God will break down barriers. When believers are together, huh, God's power will flow to us. Huh? When believers are together, new birth will take place. Huh? Only when we are together when, as believers, huh, oh God will do some things as uh, to, as to do some things for us as believers. Uh, only when we're together, only when we're on the same page, when believers are together, God will do the miraculous. When believers are together, uh, victories are won. When believers are together, uh, impossibilities take a back seat. Uh, when believers are together, people are saved. Uh, doubts are destroyed. Uh, doors are open. Huh? When believers are together, huh? lives are transformed. Huh? God is glorified huh? and vision is realized. Huh? And I believe that's why the psalmist writes, huh? magnify the Lord with me huh? and let us exalt huh? his name together. Huh? Beloved, there is power in togetherness. Huh? And I've got good news. Huh? Mount Zion, because of the pandemic, huh? we have not 
not been able to gather together in the same space. Uh, but I'm glad to report uh, we've been on the same page. Uh, how do you know, preacher? I know because for 50 days um, we have prayed together as a church. Uh, for 50 days men have prayed. Uh, women have prayed. Uh, for 50 days seniors have prayed. Uh, young people have prayed. Uh, young adults have prayed. Uh, we've not been in the same place. Uh, but we've been on the same page. Uh, and we've prayed for the outpouring of God's spirit. Uh, we've prayed for fresh anointing. Uh, we've prayed to, for people to receive salvation. Uh, we've prayed for marriages. Uh, we've prayed for families. Uh, we've prayed for the growth of the church. Uh, we've prayed for growth in God's word. Uh, we've prayed for God ideas. Uh, we've prayed for the youth. Uh, we've prayed for our country. Uh, we've not been in the same place. Uh, but we have been on the same page, huh? and we've prayed for greater impact, huh? and we've prayed for greater reach. Huh? We've prayed for men. Huh? We've prayed for women. Huh? We've prayed for healing. Huh? We've prayed for overflow. Huh? We've not been in the same place, huh? but we have been on the same page. Huh? For 50 days, we have prayed. Huh? We have prayed for favor. Huh? We've prayed for financial blessings. Huh? We've prayed for God to turn things around. Huh? We've prayed for a spirit of gratitude. Huh? We've prayed for God to do exceedingly, huh? abundantly, huh? above what we can ask or even think. Huh? We've not been in the same place, huh? but we've been on the same page. Huh? And I'm glad to report today huh? because we've been on the same page huh? despite not being able to be in the same place. Huh? I hear the sound huh? of a mighty rushing wind. Huh? It is the sound huh, of God's spirit being poured out. Huh? It is the sound huh, of those prayers being answered. Huh? It is the sound huh, of fresh anointing. Huh? It is the sound huh, of God doing a new thing. Huh? It is the sound huh, of God opening the windows of heaven. Huh? It is the sound huh, of God breaking out huh, and breaking in huh, in a new way. I hear a sound. Huh? And it is the sound huh, of the wonderful things huh, that God has done huh, and is about to do. Huh. I hear a sound. Huh. It's the sound of deliverance. Huh. It's the sound of healing. Huh. It's the sound of breakthrough. Huh. It's the sound of restoration. Huh. It's the sound of new life. Huh. I hear a sound. Huh. It's the sound of victory. Huh. It's the sound of God turning things around. Huh. It's the sounds of debts being canceled. Huh. It's the sound of scholarships being given. Huh. It's the sound of family members getting saved. Huh. It's the sound of people answering God's call huh, on their life. Huh. It's the sound huh, of God opening doors huh, that no one can close. Huh. I hear a sound. Huh. It's the sound of power, huh? and it's about to fall, huh? fall, huh? fall huh? on every believer huh? that is present. Huh? And I need to say today huh? that being present huh? is not about being in a physical space. Huh? It's about a spiritual posture huh? towards Almighty God. Huh? Being present, huh? it's about saying yes to God. Huh? It's confessing that Jesus is Lord. Huh? It's saying, Lord, not my will, huh? but your will be done. Huh? It's declaring huh? that, Lord, have your way huh? in my life, huh? in my church, huh? in my mind, huh? in my heart. Huh? It is a spiritual posture huh? towards Almighty God. Huh? It's about saying, Lord, if you can use anything, you can use me. It's about declaring, here I am, Lord. Send me, I will go. It's about saying to God, oh, to thee, I surrender. It's about declaring that on Christ, the solid rock I stand, oh, on the ground. It's sinking sand. I said I hear a sound. We've not been in the same place, 
but because we have been on the same page uh, remember God said uh, while well, Pentecost uh, was about a harvest festival uh, it's a, it was about uh, the receiving uh, of the first wheat harvest of the year uh, and I hear the spirit saying Mount Zion uh, that because we've been on the same page uh, despite not being able to be in the same place uh, that God is about to give us a harvest, huh? that the harvest is plenty, huh? that the harvest is ripe, huh? that the harvest is coming. Huh? So I just step out and let somebody know, get ready huh? for what God is about to do. Huh? The Holy Spirit huh? is about to do something huh? extraordinary in your life huh? and in our church huh? and through your life huh? and through our church huh? because there is power huh, in togetherness. Huh? I just want to encourage the saints of God today. Huh? Let's stay together. Huh? Let's get together. Huh? Let's get on the same page huh? because God is about to do something that we have never seen. We're about to hear some stuff that we've never heard. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is power in togetherness. My brothers and my sisters, this, this whole notion of togetherness reminds us that even as believers in the face of the ebbs and flows and the twists and turns of life, that we need and that we want others to walk with us, to stand with us, to lock arms with us, to journey with us. Others that we can face life together with, that we can do the work of ministry and mission. It reminds us, beloved, that in the kingdom of God, none of us are in our island unto ourselves. That when the people of God, when believers are together, that God's presence, God's power is present. That means that we are stronger together and that we can do more together. And that we as a people are better together. And so I want to make an appeal to, uh, to someone today who has been out of fellowship with the church for whatever reason. This is an invitation for you to get reconnected because you were not meant to walk alone. You were, meant, you were not meant to be on this journey alone. You were meant to be on this Christian walk in fellowship and togetherness with other believers. We are imperfect. We don't get it right all the time. But I want you to know, child of God, that when we, when we, when you and I are together, God will do some incredible things. Like God is doing some incredible things in and through Mount Zion. And I don't want you to miss out. I want you to be a part of what God is doing through this church. God is changing lives through this church. God is blessing people through this church. God is making an impact through this church. God is doing incredible things through this church. And that's because we are together. And we want you to be a part of it. I want you to know that at Mount Zion, we believe that anybody can become a new person in Jesus Christ. And that no matter who you are, where you've been, what you've done, what you did last night, what you did when you woke up this morning, that God still loves you. God still has an incredible plan and purpose for your life. And God still wants to use you for his glory. And we want you to know that no matter where you are on your life's journey, 
that at Mount Zion you will find a people, that you would find a church where you would be welcomed and where you would be loved, where you can feel the power of togetherness. And so if you're listening to me today and you don't have a church home and you feel the Spirit of the Lord tugging on your heart, I want you to say yes. First, I want you to say, say, say yes to becoming a follower of Jesus. If you're not saved, if you're not saved, the Bible says if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and if you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you will be saved. I want you to know today that you can be saved if you pray that simple prayer. Right now, right where you are, in your car, at your kitchen table, in your living room, in your bed with the covers pulled up, if you pray that prayer, you can be saved. If you prayed that prayer, I want to invite you to become a part of what God is doing here at Mount Zion. We would love to have you. We would love to encourage you on this Christian walk. We want you to be a part of what God is doing. Don't miss out. Here's the thing. You have to, the Bible says the Spirit fell on all believers who were present. So that means you have to believe. That means you have to be present. Like I said, being present is not about a physical place. It is about a spiritual posture of surrender and not to, of, uh, it's a, a spiritual pros, uh, posture of surrender towards God. And it is a, an acknowledgement of the Lordship of Jesus Christ in and over your life. Be present. So that you can get the power. Be present. So God can fill you with his purposes. Be present. So that God can use you for his glory. Be present. So that you can be an instrument for the master's use. Be present. And it doesn't matter what your history is. It doesn't matter what mistakes you have made. It doesn't matter what side of the political aisle you stand on. It don't matter if you're white or black. It don't matter your age, your stage, or station in, your, in life. The question is, do you believe? Are you a believer? And are you willing to be present? Are you willing to say yes? That's what a believer is. I encourage you on this Pentecost Sunday, say yes to the Lord. And watch God change your life suddenly. Watch God use you in unexpected ways suddenly. I believe it today. And here's the thing. You don't have to do it alone. Let's do it together. Because there is power in togetherness. In a moment, if, not, if it hasn't already, uh, there will be... Uh, some numbers that are going to scroll across your screen. I want you to call one of those numbers. We stand ready to pray with you, to encourage you, uh, there is, uh, to receive you. There is a link that's going to pop up in that Facebook live chat, that Zoom chat, YouTube chat. We want you to click on that link, give us your information, send us an email so that we can reach out to you. You don't have to walk alone. There is power in togetherness. And we want you to be a part of this. Our love, the privilege to be your pastor, and we would love to be your church family. Again, no matter where you are on your life's journey, you are welcome here. So call one of those numbers. Give us your information. Click that link so that we can reach out to you and connect with you and encourage you. My brother, my sister, I pray that you were blessed that you were encouraged, that you were inspired, that you were strengthened through the word of God and through the worship of God that has gone forth this day. I want you to remember, you don't have to walk alone. There is power in togetherness. Now, go and have an incredible week with an incredible God. God bless you. Love you. See you next week.
If you prayed the prayer of salvation, let us know about your commitment by sending us an email at admin at mountzion.bm. If you need additional prayer for the next 25 minutes, you can call the following numbers. Reverend Lashana Smith at 1441-531-4128. Reverend Yvonne Thompson at 1441-337-1713. Reverend Dion Green at 1441-334-7990. Brother Ross Smith at 1441-599-6171. At Mount Zion, we are striving to become a 100% tithing church. For those in Bermuda, you can give online through direct deposit. If you would like to receive more information on how to do so, send us an email at admin at mountzion.bm. If you don't have the capability for direct deposit, you can send us an email at admin at mountzion.bm and arrangements can be made. Thank you for supporting the ministry and mission of Mount Zion. Thank you for worshiping with us. Remember, you are blessed of God. Walk in your blessings. Share your blessings. Be a blessing. Until next time, have an incredible week with an incredible God. The best is yet to come. God bless you.